definitely make sure that you've watched the previous videos on glycolysis, then the link reaction, then the Krebs cycle, because I've been talking about the circus and using this analogy of collecting these tickets called NADH molecules, which I told you eventually those tickets can be exchanged for three ATP molecules each. So this final bit here, the electron transport chain, I might split this into two videos, but uh, don't get too overwhelmed with everything here. Remember, think big picture. The goal is I have all these tickets in hand, these NADH molecules, and I am going to somehow be able to convert these into ATP. This is the first part of that chain. So they make it a game. Uh, you go to the circus, you play all your games, you collect all these tickets, you've got your pockets full of these tickets, and then you got to go to the ticket counter, but the ticket counter is a little bit complex looking, looks like this, but uh, in the end, this is going to help us produce, well, three ATP molecules for each one of these. So uh, I bet I've collected a lot of these, and I sure have. So take a look. This is actually, uh, we're looking at the mitochondria, Con a mitochondria in here. Um, let's make sure we know what we're looking at here. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane. Remember that the plasma membrane, this is not just this, what the cell membrane looks like. Vesicles, uh, vesicle membranes look like this. Um, the mitochondria also is complex and it looks like this as well too. So this is the inner mitochondrial membrane, which is this squiggly part on the inside here. Um, this top part above this is called the matrix and the matrix is the blue stuff that's in here and then down underneath is the intermembrane space this is very very important this intermembrane space over here is the space that is actually between the inner membrane and the outer membrane so this part that i'm tracing this kind of darker area blah, 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 over here all this this is called the intermembrane space so this down here is the intermembrane space so what's actually happening let's start with uh, our first ticket. Our first ticket, we come and we drop it off here, and this ticket actually ends up, it's got a lot of energy in it, but we need it in the correct form, which is ATP. So this NADH is gonna come, this is an electron uh, carrier, and this is why it's called the electron transport chain, because electrons are gonna move around. So this guy comes into the machine, dro gets dropped off, <laughs> and it drops off electrons. I'll explain why there's two electrons later. But anyways, these two electrons get dropped off and they start to get passed down. The next one will come in, so on and so forth. And basically you end up getting a lot of electrons being transported. Hence, we call it the electron transport chain. When this NADH gets dropped off, now this is really interesting, little side note here, is that when it gets dropped off, um, not only does it drop off its electrons, it also drops off its hydrogen ions. These are protons. They're called protons. So these protons get dropped off and uh, it, the NADH, after it drops off the H's, gets converted back into NAD+. That's just like an uncharged battery right there. And that uncharged battery is going to return to the matrix where it can get charged up again. We're going to see that later. And so not only did we drop off uh, electrons, but we also dropped off the H's. And I'm going to just let the H's hang out in this matrix area right here. Now this is going to happen quite a lot. So each time one of these comes out and drops it off, it's going to drop off more and more of these H's and then more and more of these electrons are going to be uh, transferring down here. So let me skip all the way to the end and say where do these electrons go? Well what have we not talked about so far in all of this cellular respiration business? We've talked about glucose, we've talked about the formation of carbon dioxide and we've talked about where we're going to get energy in the end but we haven't mentioned oxygen yet but I did say that in order for aerobic respiration to happen we need oxygen this is the tiny place the tiny role that oxygen actually plays it's so small I'm not even going to give it a special color it's right here that's oxygen right there Oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor. If there is no oxygen there is no place for these electrons to go and if these electrons don't go then all of this stops, nothing works here, and we're not going to make any, any ATP as a result of it. So don't even bother coming into the mitochondria if there's no oxygen, because oxygen acts as, that's it, the final electron acceptor. That's its only role. I guess I will give it a, a little star. That is the role of oxygen, to accept the electrons so they have a place to go. And so after it accepts the electrons, it joins together with some extra protons, and guess what? It turns into water. This tiny little piece here is pretty much half of the cellular respiration equation. Oxygen accepts those electrons, accepts some protons, and gets converted to water. And that's one of the byproducts, right? Besides carbon dioxide that comes off. Um, okay, so that's pretty much 
it there. What about that broken ticket that the old man gave me called FADH2? Well, this actually can be used as well, but this drops off a little bit later in the chain, not right here. I'm gonna squeeze it in here. All right, let me get move this out of the way a teeny bit. Uh oh, FADH is going to drop off right there, just like this guy did, but it's gonna do it over here, and it's gonna give off its own electrons and uh, feed them in there, electrons gonna move around and they're gonna be accepted by oxygen, no big deal. It just happens later in the process. And actually this being, being later in the process actually contributes to the reason why we only really get two ATP molecules as a result of three from NADH. And again, this FADH2 can be converted, can you see that? Get converted back into FADH+, which is gonna return to the matrix and it's like an uncharged battery, but it can be charged up again a little bit later. All right, what's the point of all of this? Besides the fact that oxygen picks up the last electrons and gets converted to water, we haven't even made ATP yet. What this is doing, and this is the part where it's going to be kind of difficult to understand, so just think of it like this. The movement of these electrons down this electron transport chain um, releases energy, okay? And the result of this energy being released helps us to move uh, these protons. These protons are actually going to move across. These are actually little proton carriers. And as a result of all this, this energy, this energy from electrons moving helps to actually move, pump these dudes, these protons across, pump these protons across into the intermembrane space. The intermembrane space. So where is that? That's the tiny space in here. So we're basically crowding this space with protons. That is the goal. And this area in the end will have high proton concentration, and this side will have a low proton concentration because we're basically moving all of these protons over using this energy. This is going against the concentration gradient, so we need some energy to do that, but we don't have ATP yet, so it's actually these electrons. It's like, I don't know, it's like they figured out a turbine system where the movement of these electrons is helping to provide the energy required to move these protons over to here sounds really complicated and unnecessary and it probably is but this is the nature of biology and there were probably very much simpler mechanisms but this is how evolution has brought us to this complex uh, area here so three of these carriers use this energy to transfer transfer these protons across um, that's the final goal the final goal is to increase the concentration of protons so i will split this into two videos because so what now that we filled this intermembrane space here da -da 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 -da, with all of this extra all of these extra protons here what good is that and that brings us to our very final stage where this stuff is actually going to be used to make what we've been waiting for all this time which is a t p this overall process here that's happening is called oxidative phosphorylation actually we need to join that with the last video so maybe we'll revisit that in a, in a little bit here and this is actually related to the the next section of the video we're basically going to use these protons to help us create atp but we need something else to help us do that um, those of you who are wondering why two electrons i'm just going to leave this here for you really i think it's a small detail you don't ever really have to explain but those of you who are curious go ahead and take a look at that box. It explains why we're dropping off two electrons at a time, and here's an equation that goes with that if you really, really, really want to know. But in summary, the electron transport chain is where these molecules, these NADH molecules, these tickets we've collected, we're dropping them off in the electron transport chain, and it's going to result in electrons moving, protons being pumped across into and being stored up in this intermembrane space over here and oxygen is the final electron acceptor which will take the electrons and then and then actually join them together with protons to form water which is a, a waste product right there okay so the goal of this entire thing if there's only one thing you need to know is that the electron transport chain resulted in a buildup of protons in the intermembrane space. Stay tuned in the next video to find out what happens to these protons and where we get our ATP.